Hi, John with eTrailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at and installing the Furion Chill HE 15,000 BTU rooftop air conditioner. So here's what the unit looks like on the inside of your camper. Look, this is a great option if you're either wanting to add air conditioning to your camper or if you're going to replace the air conditioning on your camper. We have different setups available at eTrailer. If you just want the rooftop unit by itself and you'll reuse, uh, if you have an existing Furion unit that you want to replace and you just want to replace the upper unit, you can do that. Um, if it was me, I would get the entire kit, at least with the lower air box as well. We also have a kit, um, and that's what we installed today, was it has a thermostat with it as well. So you have uh, your separate controls for your heat and AC, you've got the new rooftop unit, and you've got the new uh, lower control here. So if you've had rooftop ACs in your camper before, this works very similar. Um, if not, this is how this operates. You're going to have your cold air coming out of here, and you can close these vents here to put maximum airflow to the rest of your camper, existing ductwork, if you have it. If you don't, then your cold air comes here, and then your warm air and the air that it's going to be pulling out of your camper is going to be coming here. This is your washable, reusable filter. It comes out like this. You can see all the connections. We're easy to get to. We have our 120 volts, we have our 12 volts, and we have our thermostat wiring right here. Now, the thermostat that's supplied with the kit um, is, is great. It is backlit um, with the blue backlighting. Uh, you're going to have fans functions. You're going to have high and low fan. You're also going to have a dry mode where it's going to kick the air conditioning on just to remove humidity inside of here. You also have, of course, a cool mode. You can adjust temperature up and down on all of these. And then you also will have your heat mode, which is going to run your furnace. Now, this kit is for a single zone uh, camper, basically a camper with one air conditioning unit. And what that means is whatever temperature we set out here, it's going to remain the same throughout the entire camper. If you have multiple AC units or want multiple AC units, maybe you're uh, down south where it's just hot and you need more AC units, we have multi-zone kits available. That way you could have maybe a lower temperature up in your bedroom and a higher temperature back in the living quarters. So this is what the unit looks like up on top of your camper. It does have a, uh, a full shell on it to keep the parts protected and clean up here. Now something that uh, you may want to know, um, on the website it's reading as 13 and 9 16 high. We went ahead and we measured this. This, uh, if you, if you want to know, it will sit about 14 inches high off your camper once it's installed. Uh, I don't know if that half inch or whatever is going to make a difference, but it might. So uh, once this unit's installed, 14 inches high off your camper, uh, aerodynamic, it's not low profile, but this is just like about every other unit. This is kind of a standard size uh, for a 15,000 BTU unit. And one last thing as far as color options go, uh, we chose white. Uh, we had a white roof and it looks good on our camper. If you have a darker camper or if you're looking for something else, we do have these available in black um, if that's going to fit your camper better. Um, other than that, the install is pretty easy. The hardest part is going to be getting this thing up on the roof of your camper. It does weigh a little bit, so uh, we're lucky here. We have a forklift and we're able to forklift them up here and take the old unit off, but that's going to be your biggest hurdle. Other than that, it's a straight install, pretty easy to hook up. Uh, stick around, we'll show you how we did it. Now before we begin our install, let's go ahead and take a look at what you actually get in this kit. And keep in mind, this is a single zone kit. We do have multi-zone kits if that's what you need, uh, but this is going to work great if you just want to add an AC unit to your camper or if you want to upgrade or replace your existing. So we have the new air plenum or air box, they call this. This is the part that's actually inside the camper where you'll adjust your airflow and filter the air. You're going to have the control box. Now this talks with your thermostat and your AC unit to help keep your camper heated and cooled together. You're going to get a new thermostat, a single zone thermostat. You'll be able to do all of your controls from here, running fans, running heat, running AC. And finally, of course, you've got the big air handler unit right here. It's 15,000 BTU. Now we've done tests here at eTrailer. These things are performing quite well. You can get up to a 20 degree temperature differential from the outside air temperature. Let's go ahead and get this stuff installed.
We're inside the camper now. Of course, before you begin any job like this, you want to verify that the power has been disconnected. Go to your main breaker and shut all the breakers off. Make sure that you have no power to this unit right here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to remove the filter from the air plenum on the inside here. One more thing that I like to do is I just like to double check with a voltmeter set on AC voltage and just double check that your power is off and we are good here. Now, all I did was disconnected. Uh, there's a metal panel that went over this and this is coming from our air conditioner and the hard lines are coming. That was our AC power in. So we're disconnected now. And on this particular one, we have a strain relief and I'm just gonna go ahead and work the wires through to get them out of the power distribution box on our unit. Now everybody's situation is going to be a little bit different with their camper. Right now uh, I'm just separating the wires that come from our camper versus the wires, um, all these wires that would lead up to the to the unit. So I've got the main power wires that are coming from our camper that would go to the unit. Those are disconnected. Um, I'm also going to disconnect these, which are going to be the thermostat wires, and I'm going to disconnect that from the unit. It's a good idea. Um, if you're not sure where everything's going to go right now, snap a picture of these electric lines before you take them apart. That way, if, if something gets messed up or if you just need to reference it in the future, you'll have a picture of the way that it, this was originally wired up. I've already taken a picture of this for myself. So I think I've got all the wires disconnected uh, coming from our camper. I'm going to go ahead and I've got four 13 millimeter bolts at least for this application and I'm going to pull this inner plate down. So we got everything disconnected. It looks like we're going to be, our next step is going to be up, going up to the roof and unbolting the unit from the roof. But while you're here, it's a good idea just to check everything out. You can see our ductwork. And again, your camper may be different, but inspect the ductwork, make sure everything's sealed on that. You're looking for leaks. This is actually the, the roof of the camper on this box on all four sides. Just inspect the wood, make sure nothing's leaking. And we look pretty good on this so our next step will be to go up on the roof so whenever I'm up on the roof of the camper I always like to bring just a spare sheet of cardboard or something um, you just don't want to poke any holes into the membrane on here so as far as the air conditioner goes um, we loosened up everything downstairs and these things might be stuck a little bit maybe to the rubber from the Sun but for the most part they should be free and ready to move So before we put the new unit back on, it's a good idea um, to go ahead and clean up the surface around where this new seal is going to sit. It'll just take care of any dirt and grime and just help that foam seal keep out moisture from inside your camper. Now you're going to want to know where your foam edge is when you go to set your unit down. You just match it up with the hole on the top of your camper here. OK, 
Okay, so at this point in the installation, let's talk about some of the wiring that you see here. You're going to have this block coming down from the unit up on the roof. You're going to have your 120 volts coming in from your camper. You're going to have the 12 volts coming in from your camper, ground, and your furnace lines. And you, if you are replacing a unit that had a thermostat, you'll have your thermostat wires. Now, in our instance here, we're replacing a unit that had an infrared uh, remote control that used it as a thermostat. So we had to actually run thermostat lines. Um, and your camper is just going to be kind of your situation. We ended up having to follow, uh, we used fish tape and we followed from the ceiling fan and then from light to light to light to finally end up at this location right here. The reason we did that was because the manufacturer had to drill through uh, the joists and everything else just to get the electric lines through and that's what we followed. It worked for us. Your situation may be different, um, but when you're placing your thermostat, just know that it's it's not very big and you want to keep it away from a from a heat source or uh, anything that could possibly be damaged such as a slide or a moving part like that. Now in this instance we just went ahead and used some spare four pole flat wire. This only carries 12 volts so this is going to be perfect for this. If you don't have wire laying around we do have some jacketed wire here at e-trailer that would work great in this instance. It's sold by the foot so you can kind of measure what you need and then buy what's required for the installation. Before we actually bolt the bottom panel on um, to mount this, I just wanted to show you that these foam blocks, we have one in each corner. Um, and as we go and take the supplied big bolts here, they're 3 8 inch heads, and when we go and torque, start torquing this down, we're going to start compressing this foam gasket. So what we are looking for is about 9 16 of compression out of this black foam. And what that's going to end up meaning is that these white blocks will be probably even with our roof line. So we're going to tighten these four bolts down uh, a little bit at a time and, and uniformly as possible. So one thing to note as we put our panel up, we have a this way front. And this needs to point obviously towards the front of the camper. And you want to take all of your wires and run them inside the opening here as you bring this up. All of the wires go inside that opening. Now you may have to pull down on the front of the unit here to get to get the unit to line up. We got the one started. We'll go ahead and. We can get the other corner. This top unit keeps wanting to lean back on me, so I've got my hand on it to hold it down just so we don't cross thread these bolts. Looks like we got that one started. So I've got all four bolts started. I'm going to just go ahead and run these bolts in until it touches. I've got all the bolts touching. I'm gonna to begin tightening them down slowly and I'm just gonna do a cross pattern here. Here you can see the bottom of our roof and then the, the tab. And as I tighten this down, you'll see that slowly come up and meet up with it. So just check each corner and make sure that the bottom of the indicator is at the top of your roof line. And then you'll know that you've got the correct amount of torque on this plate. Okay, we're going to be putting our upper duct divider in next. On this mounting bracket, we've got some 
we've got a uh, some double-sided tape here. We've got to take the backing off of it at the very top. I barely saw it when it was when it was on there. It took me a minute to find out what they were talking about. So now we're going to be placing this up here. It's basically going to separate these two compartments. This is going to be your air intake here, and this is where all your cold air is going to be blasting. So as we do this, we have foam up here. We want to make sure we press up before we go and press back against it. This is basically going to stick to the back side of this and then we'll come in with some foil. So I'm pressing up into the foam so we got a good connection up there. Now the next step is going to involve something that's not included with the kit and it's this foil duct tape. You can pick this up basically at uh, home improvement stores or hardware stores. They have this. Um, it's just really sticky stuff and it's made for environments like this. And what we're going to do is seal up uh, the upper duct divider that we just put up here. And we're going to run tape along that seam and then anywhere else that cold air can mix with warm air. So I'm going to put some on this edge here on the edge on the other side that's just like this and just make sure that this is just sealed up that these two compartments are completely separate from each other. So I went ahead and taped up the corners and the edges like I said it was going to. Now in the kit they've also got this foam provided and this is basically just condensation foam and then we're going to put this on the inside. We're going to cover what we just did with it and that way um, it just keeps condensation and everything from eventually seeping in here and, and ruining things. So this kit comes with enough it looks like to go over yeah on both sides. So we need to cut it though it's too long. So I've just got a sharpie here and I'm going to mark what I need to cut. Go ahead Peel the backing off here, set up here first and then peel it off that way. Because this stuff is really sticky. Now we're going to hook up our control box. First thing we need to do is you loosen up the strain relief. This is where our wires are going to go in. So we loosen that up and then took the screw off of this and that'll expose our wires on the inside of here. And these are coded for you. This is going to be, the black's going to be hot, white's going to be neutral, and the yellow and green is going to be your ground. So we'll come up to our supply line from the camper. Went ahead and took the old strain relief off and now we can feed these through. So this is a shot of it wired up. We have the black coming in from our camper going to the black to the control box. Again, the same with the white. And then for our ground, the green and yellow is gonna go to the bare copper wire. That's gonna be our ground. Go ahead and tape these up. A fine line of having enough line in here to be able to access it and then cramming too much wire in here. So I like to Make sure this is all going to fit first into the box and then go ahead and tighten down the strain relief on the back a little bit at a time on each side. And all that does is it just locks the wire to the box so as we pull it, it won't pull on our connections. And we'll go ahead and replace the cover. So with the big line made. I'm going to go ahead and mount this box just so it's not swinging all over the place as we make our low voltage connections. It has a tab on it that will line up with this and then the screw goes into the here. And the screws are provided. Just a real quick overview here. Uh, obviously, this is a plug coming down from our unit. This will plug directly into our control box. This is a freeze sensor. This actually goes up. I'll be reaching up there and we'll attach that to the 
uh, condenser on our unit up there. Now, the thermostat wires are all clearly labeled right here. And this is going to be our thermostat wire. So these are going to get connected. And then we've got 12 volt and ground right here. And then the two furnace wires. And that's going to go to my 12 volt and ground that I tagged here. And then these are going to be my furnace wires. So then these will get linked up. I went ahead and connected the upper unit right into the box here. That was easy enough. The free sensor goes up into the unit. Um, it actually gets inserted into the fins. I went ahead and just took a little Phillips bit and kind of made a space for it and then it slid in there. Um, it's kind of important to so that it knows whether or not it's freezing up. It's one of those things that you kind of just need to be able to, it's hard to get to, so we can't really show you, but the temperature probe just needs to go into the fins and then it has a clasp that goes over the fins and kind of locks itself in. So other than that, we've made our connections here for our thermostat. Your wiring is going to look different. Remember, we didn't have a thermostat. We ran new wiring. So um, I'm going to follow my color codes um, for the thermostat. And uh, we'll go ahead and go make those connections now. And then we can clean this up later. So we have our thermostat wires coming out of the wall. If you take the cover off the back of the thermostat, you're going to see your connections, what you need. You know, the ground, 12 volt, A, and B. So if you already have existing wiring for your thermostat that you hooked up, go ahead and follow that for your wiring. So to install these on the back, you see these little buttons here. You need to push down pretty far on the button, and then the wire will slide in there, and it's locked in. So we have all of our connections made. Next thing to do is going to be to go ahead and lock the thermostat on. You start it at an angle and then just turn clockwise and it'll click on. Our next step is going to be to actually install the cover plate down here. Um, we're going to go ahead and pop the filter off. Your large opening is going to go on the suction side. So it'll go up like this. So as you put it up, it'll have two snaps on the front here that will lock it into place. So it gives you some free hands to go ahead and grab the screws and put them in. Next we can install the filter. Just kind of snaps into place here. And then Included with the kit are some plastic tabs, plastic buttons here, and that'll be used to cover up our screw holes. And that was a look at the Furion Chill HE 15,000 BTU rooftop air conditioner.